Hey, this is Les with Comfortable Shoes Studio, and this is another episode of Art Making. In this one, I'm testing out some inexpensive watercolors from Five. All right, so here I am just making some squares of different colors, and I'm intending to test some pens on these blocks of color just to see how they interact with this particular paint. Um, so I'll do um, a bunch of different pens, different pen types, different inks, just to see what they look like or how they respond to work on this watercolor on this paper. Um, you know, I am fine. I found on this page that the color is pretty pale um, and not very intense. So I'm just doing a couple of different watercolor background styles. Uh, I'm also testing out a bunch of the different paints so that I can see what those colors look like. So I start out with some circle shapes and I'm finding that the color, I need to apply a lot of the color to get it to the vibrancy that I enjoy for watercolors. Um, I'm also have to, ha have to apply it more thickly than I do for watercolors. Um, I'm also noticing that um, with the amount of water for it to behave like a watercolor, um, it, the colors are just really pale. The other thing that I've noticed is that the color, once it's on the page, doesn't blend or move. So it behaves much more like, I would say, a gouache than a watercolor. And um, in that case, you know, it that's fine. Um, I don't know that I would use these for another background. I'll talk a little bit more about that in, um, in, in towards the end of the video. Um, so yeah, so, you know, these, these colors are pretty intense. They stay put once you put them on the page. If you put in enough water, yeah, they'll move around a little bit, but the color doesn't merge and flow around the page the way I like watercolors to do. Um, the colors are a little chalky looking, um, like inexpensive gouache. I keep coming back to gouache because they really remind me of gouache and not watercolor paint. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, it's just a little bit, you know, different than what you would expect a watercolor to behave like. So I have spritzed the page with water and I'm trying to get that loose flowy watercolor look that I, I really like for backgrounds. And you can see here, um, even with the page spritzed with water, it does not move. Um, the brush strokes are still pretty visible. Um, even in the wetter areas of the page, there's just not a lot of color movement. There's not a lot of blending. They just stay put. They stay, they stay exactly where you put them, which is great if you're painting with gouache, <laughs> but it's not a watercolor effect. Um, so these make great backgrounds anyway. Um, you know, I did, I have drawn on all of these since I've recorded this. Um, I'm gonna explain in a minute some of the stuff that I've done with them. Um, like the first page with the with the blocks, I'm just that's just a straight up test page. These pages I've done portraits on um, as part of my regular portrait exercise. Um, now for this one, I am setting this up specifically to do a portrait on. So um, the yellow area is what I would use for like uh, eyes and forehead. The pink area is nose and cheeks. And then I'm doing a little bit of blue for the lower half of the face. So it's in shadow and I'm going to do some more pink up on the forehead and then I'll do some other colors, um, around. I'm using a, uh, in this section, a pretty springy snap brush, uh, by Princeton. It is, you know, it's relatively inexpensive brush, but they work pretty well. And I think this one is actually not for watercolors, but for acrylics, which, uh, when working with gouache, I tend to use acrylic brushes. Uh, I use watercolor brushes as well. I like a nice snappy watercolor brush. Um, so I think you can kind of see the like face area <clears throat> on that page. Now I'm going to do another one with slightly different coloration. Uh, one of the things I did find, so that's a neon-y kind of pink. 
Um, so I'm putting some pink down and then I'm putting a different shade of pink. The other two shades of pink are nearly identical. Um, the uh, neon pink is lighter. The other two pinks are really similar. Um, so then I'm just putting some yellow around it and uh, kind of fleshing that out a little bit. I'm going to add some more more color here, trying to get that flowy watercolor look. I'm really struggling to get that. F I really want the flowy watercolor look, um, but I'm just not getting it with these watercolors. Um, I keep coming back to the fact that it, they just behave like gouache. Uh, so this is a really good one for portraits. Uh, having having the amount of yellow um, around the page was really good. Um, so you can see there the pages are incredibly wrinkly. Um, so I get out this iron. This is an old, like probably from the 70s or 80s travel iron um, my grandmother gave me. And uh, it is it heats up fast. It's not very energy efficient, um, but I also have never put water in it. So um, I use it for ironing paper pretty often and it works great for that. And this really did smooth out the pages. I don't usually iron my sketchbook. Um, if you have used a foam memo or thermal printer, do not iron your pages onto where the foam memo will sit. Uh, it will turn anything from a thermal printer completely black. Um, so anyway, just uh, some so a little review of the five below uh, watercolors. Thanks for being here. Really appreciate it. Give me a thumbs up, like, or share this video if you feel so inclined. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you next time. Bye.